services, all of the big four Australian banks are represented in Hong Kong. Uh, a lot of people in professions like architecture, engineering, accountancy, legal firms, you know, very, very strong presence. Uh, you find Australians in, in all walks of life in Hong Kong, quite interesting actually. Uh, my favourite examples are the horse racing industry. Uh, and if anybody's been to Hong Kong, you'll know how iconic the uh, Happy Valley racetrack is. When you go out there, you'll find that there are Australian horses, Australian jockeys, Australian trainers, Australian stewards, a lot of Australian technology. So it's a, it's a really nice sort of symbiotic relationship. Uh, and it reflects, I think, the fact too that Australia has a reputation in Hong Kong of providing very high quality products high-end uh, food and wine, or beverages, all those sorts of things. It's a, it's a relationship that I think um, reflects very well on Australia and its capacity for meeting the demands of uh, Asian countries. Paul, is it correct that the Consul General in Hong Kong is Australia's second largest overseas polling station for federal elections? Yeah, that's right. It, it's, it's a bit hard to get a, an exact figure on the size of the Australian community, but the, the one thing we do know, or two things we do know, one is that we're the second largest passport issuing office anywhere in the world. The only place that issues more passports than we do at the consulate in Hong Kong is the High Commission in London. Uh, similarly, uh, when there's a federal election, of course, Australians overseas can vote through our consulates, our embassies, our high commissions. And we know that the number of votes received through the Australian consulate in Hong Kong is the second largest of any individual polling booth anywhere in the Australian electoral system, including in you know, Sydney, Melbourne, Canberra, anywhere else. The only place that gets more votes than Hong Kong is the High Commission in London. So we know there's a very big community there, again, reflecting the, the depth and the strength of our trade and investment relationship with Hong Kong. And what about Hong Kong's involvement in Australia? Uh, again, very significant. I mentioned before the substantial uh, investment relationship. Hong Kong's about uh, the fifth, sixth, seventh, depending on when you're measuring it. Uh, source of foreign investment coming into Australia. Investments uh, throughout a number of sectors, but particularly strong in areas like utilities, uh, infrastructure. Um, again, some iconic things like the, uh, the railway system part of it in Melbourne, electricity distribution in South Australia and Victoria, uh, some of the port facilities in Sydney. So uh, again, a very, um, very positive relationship. Uh, and I think it's, it's growing. Uh, one, of the, one of the great things about Hong Kong, of course, is it has a very uh, sophisticated and very credible international financial market. Um, Australia uses that as a source of capital uh, for investment into Australia, but it's also increasingly used uh, by Chinese companies seeking access into the international markets. You know, we estimate there's something like about 3,000 Chinese corporates represented in Hong Kong now, including listed on, on the Hong Kong Stock Exchange. They do that because they get a great deal of comfort out of operating through uh, the credible and sophisticated uh, Hong Kong markets, which of course are backed up by having the rule of law, and in Hong Kong's case it's common law, uh, which is something which is familiar to most Australian investors and indeed other Western investors. So it really cements Hong Kong's role as a, an important international financial centre. And again, that's, that's important for Australia's relationship with not only Hong Kong, but also with the other North Asian economies and China in particular. Paul, we've spoken about the strong personal and business connections between Australia and Hong Kong. What about ties at official level? Uh, at the official level, uh, there's a very strong relationship again. Uh, lots of bilateral visits between ministers in the Hong Kong administration and uh, either ministers or senior officials in Australia. For example, the uh, Deputy Prime Minister and Treasurer of Australia has uh, been to Hong Kong twice in the last uh, six months or so. He was there most recently in January for the Asian Financial Forum, which Hong Kong um, hosts every year. One of the important outcomes of his visit was the um, launching of a bilateral dialogue between Hong Kong and Australia on trade uh, denominated in the Chinese currency, the renminbi. And uh, in fact, just recently, we've had uh, the visit of the Prime Minister to China, at which it was announced that there would now be direct uh, convertibility, direct trade between the Australian dollar and the, and the Chinese renminbi. So the relationship we've got with Hong Kong and in particular its financial centres, which has been developed by those uh, strong uh, government to government visits, including by the Deputy Prime Minister, uh, will take that relationship further. And again, Australian companies are already heavily involved.